Hi, I'm Harut Markarian, and this is Mobility and Inclusion, the show where we share the powerful stories of people with disabilities and daring entrepreneurs making waves in our world. From technological innovations to best practices in business, we'll learn what it really means to live in an inclusive and universally designed environment. Welcome to a new episode of Mobility and Inclusion. I am your host, Harut Markarian, and my special guest today is John McLaren who spent 38 years working first as a U.S. Navy in the intelligence field as cryptologist and then as a U.S. Navy SEAL in direct action work. After active duty, he worked as a private contractor and business owner specializing in personal protection, threat assessment, pedophile prevention and reporting, fugitive and traffic personnel retrieval, and other safety-related jobs. John was voted one of the top 100 most influential trainers slash mentors of, of the 20th century for my fitness and health industry work. He is the lead uh, instructor and national director of the U.S. Navy SEAL candidate program in the country. Coach Mac, as you're also known, <laughs> delivers security, safety, and leadership seminars around the country. He maintains a cutting-edge understanding of threat assessment and violence prevention and response plan implementation, passive and active lockdown techniques, and responses to active shooter scenarios. There's no way I'm going to be able to keep up with this. There's no way. I <laughs> no. should just go now. I you go should now. not go now. No. This is, and again, I'm, I'm going to stop here because <laughs> okay. if I continue to list <laughs> this, this man's accomplishments, knowledge, and the impact he had and continues to have today, we would need several other episodes. Coach Mac, welcome to the show. It'll let everybody know how old I am, actually. If you continue, it just lets everybody know I'm like 140 years old. So hey, that's, uh, <laughs> Thanks for having I me. I think that's a privilege <laughs> to everyone around you. It's you my know? birthday this week, actually, too. So oh, really? I, uh, someone said the other day, boy, you have a long list of things you've done. And I said, look, I'm really old. and I'm, <laughs> I've stayed busy. You're bound to accomplish something. If you stay this busy for this many years, you're bound to accomplish something. Well, I have another saying that, uh, you know, when you, when you go to college and you stay there long enough, you're bound to get a degree, right? <laughs> Exactly. I'm, I'm certain to pass something along the way. <laughs> no, no, no. All jokes aside, though, uh, I met uh, Coach Mac uh, in September. Yeah, yeah. We met in September. I took, uh, you know, uh, I did the Navy SEAL training with mm -hmm. you guys, and that was a very impactful moment uh, for me personally, and meeting the guys, meeting the younger generation that you're mentoring to go to their BUDS training, mm -hmm. do their specialized... Uh, path in the military um it was very uh fulfilling experience for me and i appreciate you for giving me that opportunity well thank you you actually did well and of course i loved when you came down with your family as well because uh, we don't see it all the time so um i always think it's something that your your kids will never forget is watching you work that hard and and doing those things you know we have a we have a saying there that uh, you don't work this hard and not find out exactly who you are absolutely so um yeah, I think it even helps your whole family. So it's great to have you down there. Yeah, no, and I plan on coming more often and bring the kids more. You know, I I would like them to go out and experience that uh, all the all the things that we've gone through to our through our trainings, right? To, mm -hmm. to see the kind of work that we're putting in, and uh, you know, I I rather have them see that than sit in front of the TV or or a computer, right? All right. If you're going to come down, I'll stay alive one more year. I'll stay alive one more year for it. See what I can do. I'll see if I can accommodate. Awesome. 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 So uh, first, first of all, uh, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank um, you. And I also want to extend my condolences to the um, to the family of uh, Kyle Mullen, I think mm -hmm. his name was. Yes. Uh, to this SEAL organization and to you. Um, you know, I think uh, he fell ill after his hell week, and then um, he passed away in the hospital, correct? He did, yes. Um, the uh, ongoing investigation, so uh, so the details of what medical issues, but he uh, completed hell week, mm -hmm. and then um, whatever had occurred in hell week was, uh, had cost him enough where he started to crash in some, mm -hmm. some sort of medical medical issue. So, yeah, it's a big loss. It's always losing any teammate or losing anyone in the SEAL teams is always a big deal. In training, uh, it echoes across the country instantly yeah. because uh, in my program here, you know, I have one job, and that's that everybody remains healthy and 
does this. And, and regardless of what the medical condition is, uh, it's my responsibility. So I always say it's uh, uh, nothing is anyone's fault, mm -hmm. but it's all my responsibility. So, so it's a, I'm sure it'll be a shockwave throughout the community and throughout every military's training communities as they learn from whatever happened there mm -hmm. and, uh, and make adjustments. So it, it is a loss that's felt. I've been in such an odd mood all week, even though unrelated to me, I don't work yeah. in the active duty command mm -hmm. and I did not know that candidate. So, uh, but um, I send hundreds of kids into uh, young men and women, but I'm old enough where I call them kids. <laughs> but I send hundreds of kids a year into into different tier one military training programs. And uh, I have yet to lose one who yeah. I've trained, meaning someone even loss of life in combat. Mm -hmm. But uh, there, if I keep in this job, it will come a day. So not Well, hopefully to. not. But, um, yeah. you know, again, uh, our condolences to the Mullen family uh, and to the whole SEAL mm -hmm. organization. Thank you. Um, let's talk about direct action, Team Eagle One. Mm. It was founded over 10 years ago. It was. Team Eagle One actually started as a um, military contract. It was a contract uh, begun by the Navy. It's, uh, I always say I have a very high level of diversity in my program. Mm -hmm. But the Navy actually started it to uh, specifically to look at increasing diversity in the SEAL teams. Mm -hmm. It is now open. I train the Marine Corps officers, officer candidates. Uh, so... The standards there, the program was actually designed. When I came in, they wanted to increase diversity. And when I started to look and run the Southern California areas at Team Eagle One, I realized there were so many. Uh, if I, ha I only have a few strengths in the world, and one of them is noticing a pattern of what removes obstacles to success and mm -hmm. what creates success mm -hmm. in performance, culture, creation, uh, different things. I'm super curious, and I just want to know what is it that, what is it that gets in our way and what do I have to do to remove that so that I can perform better mentally, physically, emotionally, mm -hmm. spiritually, um, however you want to phrase it. So I took a look at the program when I first came in and realized uh, it was being run much like the other Navy preparatory programs, which means an incredibly low level of success, high level of injury. That is pretty standard in a, in a military preparation program for candidates coming into the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines is uh, in my case the Navy, but it's pretty standard that the preparation level is extremely low. Um, it's also by design, mm -hmm. you know, they uh, they wanna get more people in the military, so they tend to under-prepare them uh, so they don't scare them away. You know, that's something the military has been pretty clear about with me over the years, and that's fine. Their job is, I always say, their job is to get you safely on the bus. It's my job to make sure that you can raise the bar in your destination programs, what I call it, so, um, and have the right character of physical development, mental, emotional. So mm -hmm. I took a look at that program and um, 10, 11, 12 years ago and said, look, if you let me run with this and revamp the program, then we will raise the bar of success and attract more people. This, is a, this was a very new concept for the Navy then, and it is still new today. It's a very, very slow moving train there. So they said, well, okay. And I said, give me six months. I said, I hear all your, all your concerns. Give me six months and I'll show you low to no injury instead of your 30% injury rate yeah. and a high level of graduation success with great character, great integrity. Um, one of the things special warfare requires is kind of an inside out approach. Mm -hmm. And that is actually not what we're very good at in the active duty SEAL teams. We're good at a we're going to make you so great on the outside, and there's a strong possibility that you might be melting down on the inside. Um, we see that more and more. So the Navy is just beginning to take a look, just beginning to recognize in the last few years that they have a serious issue. Yeah. But as always, they're, uh, they're, they tend, it's a slow-moving train. It could take them decades to catch up. So there's a few outside programs in the country like Team Eagle One. Mm -hmm. Well, the bottom line is in a short six months, we had created such a success rate. And what I was trying to demonstrate is that um, integrity matters, first and foremost. Absolutely. If you were coming to, my, which you have been, you have trained with <laughs> yeah, us. I did. If you've trained with our program, then one of the first things you hear is, I always say, I'm always going to tell you the truth as I know it. Mm -hmm. And if I find that I haven't, I will correct it. And um, that alone attracted a lot more candidates because 
all militaries, this is not a Navy thing, military pipeline programs tend to run a bit of a bait and switch where if, if I'm the Air Force, Army, Navy, Marines, I want to get you in. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you that you're prepared when statistically 96% failure rate says you're not prepared. Yeah, yeah. And one of the first things I took a look at is, I'm going to tell you the truth, always, always to the best of my ability, best of my, and then I'm constantly going to be taking a look at, same thing with when I work with corporations and corporate culture, I'm going to be taking a look at what are the obstacles to you mm -hmm. creating a lasting culture, to you creating higher level performance. That's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Higher level lasting performance is a culture. So um, we took a look at that and within six months it was uh, different. So then I took over the, I started to run testing nationally. I got, was hired by a friend of mine, Chief Rob Roy, fantastic mentor and coach as well. And uh, started to work. The contract ended, long story short, long story not so long, <laughs> as I have a way of rambling. Uh, the contract ended, and um, I decided that our program in Southern California was so successful that I just kept it going, and I just self-funded it. I just kept, you know, I work full-time, so I was funding the program mm -hmm. um, for the last 10 years, actually. So wow. even when I turned it into a nonprofit, it was mostly self-funded nonprofit until the need grew so great in the country. I mean, last year was 2,700 Young People Hub, because we work with civilians as well for academic relationship, uh, confidence, achievement, and then 2,610 the year before. And I realized um, I just couldn't. I'm a working stiff. I just couldn't fund it alone, and I didn't have the time to do both. Absolutely. So I started to actually work on actively funding and whatnot. So it's coming along. But okay. um, the one of the, it's that's the focus. Remove so, the obstacles. Uh, Please, since, go ahead. Since we're talking about funding, uh, Let's talk about how, what are the best ways of funding Team Eagle One? Oh, helping us out. Yeah. I tell you, you'd make my day. I am in the truest sense a military person and a military mind. <laughs> so um, asking anybody to help me out, I, uh, I am the person who thinks I should bleed more, sweat more, and be more tired at the beginning and the end of everything. So um, yeah, you're... I'm way beyond what I can do alone. So mm -hmm. we are we are a nonprofit, 501c3, mm -hmm. Direct Action Incorporated, and um, we are just getting our program in a less intense version than you attended, in a less intense physical version. Since our program has uh, also just teaching elements, we uh -huh. teach Absolute Responsibility uh, series, which is our leadership biomechanics series. So our, our uh, website is directaction.us, mm -hmm. directaction.us. And um, we would love corporate sponsorships, everybody reaching out. We have one of the most progressive female programs. Actually, not one of the most. We have the most progressive female programs where the males have a 96% chance. They only have a, currently, the males in the BUDS program and most of the spec ops, they have a 79 to 11% success rate. Mm -hmm. That makes a female, given the biological hormonal differences of 30 to 60% strength, um, organ rate of recovery. Uh, I could geek out on this, but I would say only NASA uses more science than we do or than I do. And on a good day, I think I have NASA beat. So, um, so if you have a 7% success rate for men, then you have a 100% failure rate for women, Absolutely. right? Because that's just a biological difference. And so there's real science that goes into training. There's real science that goes into psychology, confidence, everything. So funding us, um, wow you would make 10,000 futures happen. And uh, our program, when I designed this program, one of my missions was I wanted to raise the caliber and standard of incoming folks to the teams, to the SEAL teams. And then we started to add other special operations teams. And then now I add all branches of service. So all branches of service are included in our program. Plus we, take, we have civilians. Uh, one of the benefits and intended consequences of leadership biomechanics and the way we use performance biomechanics and the chemistry of uh, uh, neuroscience and behaviors is that, um, I lost my train of thought a little bit here, so is that um, uh, across the board, we have really changed, shifted the paradigm. Okay. So, um, we will reach about 10,000 people with the right support. I mean, it's, 
uh, I wish everybody could understand what we're talking about today, the brain chemistry and the neuroscience of actual behaviors, mm -hmm. all that negativity we're experiencing, everything when people say, just be positive. Yeah. Well, you have to know how. Exactly. You have to know how. So exactly. any corporate sponsorships, uh, all those things like that, we're a great place to donate money to. We can, we can make uh, a dollar seem like 10. So. Absolutely, and I can vouch for that. Again, I've been part of the training three times, and I intend to be part of it more times, you know, uh, but now, now I've guilted you into it. Don't worry. Yeah. I have no problem <laughs> no, using no. guilt to motivate people. I'm like, no. are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, this is something I enjoyed. So, and I can vouch for, you know, this man really, uh, shaping the next generation in, in, in the best way possible. Um, you know, you talked about integrity, discipline, you talked about, uh, you know, coming from the inside out right yeah. building building someone from the inside out we don't even see people in the in, in the real real world outside working from the inside out everybody yeah. focuses on the external it's it's shocking um because i didn't make it up i didn't make up neuroscience i didn't write the allegory of the cave yeah. I, you know i'm i <laughs> we, this is nothing new so we didn't write this but um one of the things about 15 years ago i really started to put work into understanding what we now call neuroscience mm -hmm. and the behaviors of it what makes a difference and why uh what's the difference between a foot soldier and a samurai you know for instance and why well now because brain chemistry is so much more measurable we can actually we have enough scans and ability to measure that you can take the things you thought were valid and you can actually at least get farther down that road yeah. so um what we're doing by a good incoming program prevention is response my business has always been in violence prevention and response uh post-traumatic stress uh, with the right kind of training, we've minimized your potential of having four marriages. Maybe we've knocked it down to two on a good day, maybe even one. You know, all those things. That's confidence, sense of yeah. achievement, yeah. all these. One of the things I teach to young folks is that confidence is um, not something you just have. It's developed. You build, you it's build developed. It, yeah. And it's developed every single time we experience any change and we live. The brain says, wow, we got to sit in this chair. I was a little anxious. I lived. Yeah, that's yeah. confidence building right there. So it's really, really simple, but we're getting inundated with things that fire our limbic system, put us in fight, flight, or freeze. So our adrenaline cortisol is up. If you watch the news, you're traumatized every day, even when you agree. You know, yeah. we're in fight, flight, or freeze when we agree. I know, isn't that horrible? And we go there. So the same thing that makes a well balanced Navy SEAL operator is the thing that adds confidence to the uh, folks at, at your company and corporation. So Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's an incredible time for me. This is the good fight for me. Yeah. I've been in a lot of, um, I've done the domestic violence work, pedophile prevention, taken some of the most extreme domestic violence cases because it's very hard to get police response in today's world. Mm -hmm. I still take them when they're, when they're um, extreme enough where someone's actually in danger and yeah. uh, it's all chemistry. Everything's chemistry where we, um, I get calls every week from parents and people saying I'm anxious or I'm depressed and I think, great, that means your head's working. If you're anxious all the time, it's great. Your brain is designed to be negative. Yeah. It's hardwired, as you know, because mm -hmm. we you and I talk about this. Yes, you yes. know, and I watch your I watch your work you do. Our brain is hardwired to be negative. It's hardwired um to actually minimize yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I use expression in training that uh, your brain is hardwired to make you average or just less than average. Yeah. So we have to learn to retrain it. And it's not natural because it's so safe. If I make exactly. you terrified, if you're terrified it's all the time, you're going to stay home on the couch watching some Blue Bloods or episodes of Yellowstone. Yeah. <laughs> stay right there at home. Yeah. Not going to go anywhere. Else. I was, uh, I was going to actually, this is a good segue to no. go into the uncertainty. Oh, right? God, my so, favorite word. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite, least favorite word. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're, you're talking about how we tend to stay in the safe zone, right? And mm -hmm. the comfort zone. And we avoid anything that remotely suggests an uncertain situation. But that, from what you're saying right now, that's actually when we're, our mind is working. Yes. And I love what you said, because the way you phrased it is uh, we're staying where it's safe. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's that we're designed to be uncomfortable and be okay with it. 
because uncomfortable keeps me looking around saying, oh, am I safe? Am I safe? Am I safe? Whereas our comfort level stops asking. So our brains are, especially until the age of 25 or 26, which was like 100 years ago for me, <laughs> but 25 or 26, they're biologically not advanced enough, not um, uh, mature enough mm -hmm. to actually have a really active prefrontal cortex. Yeah. So the thing they're best at is saying immediate gratification and avoid that because it's going to take resources. Mm -hmm. Sensible. It's going to take resources. So um, I love what you said is uncertainty because so many great researchers, and of course through just hundreds and hundreds or a thousand years thousand of writing, years, yeah. yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, have been talking about this. Your brain is designed to go into fight, flight, or freeze mm -hmm. to some degree, prepared for an emergency when it experiences uncertainty or change. So oftentimes so, people say, what kind of change? Any. Any change. Any. Waiting for your next question. My brain is ready to go. Is there a saber-toothed tiger in this room? <laughs> uh, there's another question coming up. Could I get eaten at the same time by this question? Yeah. So any change. That's what's so amazing to me is you look at the brilliance of people. Um, one of the things I talk to folks a lot about is listen for people's brilliance because it puts you back in your prefrontal cortex. You know, I grew up thinking people weren't that smart and I started looking around thinking, oh, no, it's actually that we're, we're brilliant, but we're, our natural way of being is actually more to trend towards yeah, the negative yeah, and fight, yeah. flight, or freeze. So uncertainty is a big word. We're going to experience it every day and what you do is what when we call control, fear, anger, mm -hmm. depression, you know, um, what we do when we experience it is whether we gain confidence or exactly. lose confidence. Yeah, yeah. Every, and I was going to say that, that yeah. that's going to also build your confidence as you put yourself through more uncertain situations and you conquer that terror barrier, you're going to build more your confidence even higher and higher. And you know what's amazing? We did not list a single thing about being better than someone else, yeah. being worse than someone Absolutely. else. Your confidence is unrelated to other people. Absolutely. You know, sense of achievement, unrelated to other people. And that's what I've listened to you speak so many times. And I think, see, it's all right there. It's not that people are copying each other. It's that our brains work in a similar way. Mm -hmm. And, um, our brains are designed to compare ourselves initially, yeah, and we keep having yeah, to train yeah. it. I had a candidate the other day say, um, it's hard to work around people that, that are better than me. And I said, well, if you keep working at it, you're going to be so inspired mm -hmm. that you will only work around people who yeah. have an area that is far beyond you. Yeah, yeah. And when I train, I have Marine Corps and Navy officers in my program. And I would say, be aware, if you need to be the best person in the room, you're all going to get killed. Yeah. Absolutely. Or your company is going to die or all these things. I need everyone to be better at me. I'm just responsible. I'm, I'm responsible. Mm -hmm. Jocko Willing said something in a podcast once. He said, if I'm doing a great job leading, my job becomes holding my people back because they're so on fire that it might create a vacuum in the surrounding environment. <laughs> I'm summarizing and everything. But yeah. I loved his phrasing is that a, yeah. a great leader isn't having to drive his people. He's having to actually pace them because they will overwhelm the surrounding environment. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Yeah. And, and you always uh, talk about uh, finding something you like mm -hmm. about people. I find something you like about everyone. Um, when I got out of the Navy, I, I was good at three or four things. Not a single one of them happened in this room right here. <laughs> you know. I, and I got out and, of course, super confident until the change in uncertainty. So I would even go to a job interview. And this is one of the things I think makes it so hard for veterans. Um, it's not about combat. They could be admin people, whatever. They haven't ever looked for a job. Mm -hmm. They've simply had to keep performing and pass some exams and yeah. advance yeah. in their jobs. Like It's actually an incredible environment for young folks because you get to be confident and have a sense of achievement. But I would start to go to interviews or deal with people and I would go in there and think, well, I'm kind of an anxious wreck. I thought, I've been on fire. I've been in 17 different countries. Don't speak the language, performing in every one. I thought, I've been on fire. So I, I kind of stumbled on this as, as we do. We stumble mm -hmm. on yeah. our own lessons. Yeah. And it was find something you like about everyone. Because if I'm anxious, I'm thinking about me. I am uncomfortable. And um, so I'd walk in the room and I'd say, oh, great glasses, you know, whatever, <laughs> just in my head. 
Yeah. And that would get my prefrontal cortex going. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, somebody would say, see that I noticed them instead of me. Absolutely. I'd see somebody's ratty old tennis shoes and think, man, they must be saving those for years. Best tennis, those are the most work tennis shoes I've ever seen. Even now we're smiling about it yeah, because yeah. that's your prefrontal cortex. Absolutely. Lighting. And the one thing, uh, to your point, one thing I remember you saying in one of the trainings that I was out there uh, when I was like breathing very heavy and and you said something and I was barely hearing you talk. <laughs> <laughs> You're fortunate to do that. <laughs> la, 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 la. I can't hear you. I oh can't my hear God. You. I was like literally like <laughs> making an effort to hear you. To, this, to hear I can't you. believe this doesn't hurt my feelings, but it does. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and, and, and I heard you say, um, stop breathing that heavy because it's not about you. It's about mm -hmm. everybody who's around you. And it brought yeah. your hearing back up. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. When we go into fight, flight, or freeze, you'll hear people say, oh, you get tunnel vision. But you also get tunnel hearing and tunnel thinking. You get tunnel blood flow. You get restricted everything. You know, when we're upset or saying something negative, mm -hmm. there's test studies that show our IQ drops up to 30 points, wow. what I call our available IQ, yeah. meaning I simply can't access the resources mm -hmm. that I have. My immune system changes just like that. Yeah. So... As soon as I point it out, and uh, people are often berating people, but that's a natural response you have, mm -hmm. is the most important thing your body says is, I am the most important thing here. And then you get reminded and go, no, I'm going to keep breathing. Yeah. I'm not at the top of Everest. Yeah. I'm not going to pass out here. And your hearing comes back because we get tunnel vision, tunnel hearing, and tunnel thinking. So, um Oh, I often use the description when you're driving down the road and a car is going to cut you off. You've been enjoying your music, but now it's the most annoying sound in the world because <laughs> those resources have been sucked out of your prefrontal cortex. And all you can think is, am I safe? Am I yeah, safe? Yeah, Suddenly your favorite music, you're turning the stereo down and you don't want to hear your passenger. And of course, that's when they're side driving. Backseat drivers are chiming in. So, yeah, the, just noticing your breathing is a great activator to minim a great moment to minimize your fight flight or freeze system mm -hmm. and then activate because you know if your body's panting for breath of course your body responds and says we might be in trouble yeah better pay attention to this we're essentially suffocating in some way that's why we're breathing so heavy absolutely so. no and again you know i'm i've joined your training and it was great and I, and i was very active all my all my years mm -hmm. Uh, you did great, by the way. People get killed the first, I mean, not dead, really. Yeah. People get <laughs> brutalized the yeah. first day because I say this training's biblical. You know, yeah. it's it's designed to exceed the standards of required to graduate from the SEAL team. And it's not like you get to go out there and say, oh, we're going to redo the first day for you. It is that you get, yeah, you like throw the, yourself into the fire. You absolutely. did really well. Yeah. And I, I enjoyed it. You know, at, at after that training, I was alive. I was alive after that training. Brilliant. Brilliant. It's uh, it's it's amazing. No, no matter how much I talk about it, I, I'm not going to do justice. I mean, everybody yeah. I think should at least try it once in their lifetime. If if you don't plan on joining the any any yeah. military organizations, at least try this type of exercise once because it can do wonders for you. And you know what's amazing? It just said too is you're really alive. Um, there's an expression in the SEAL teams. Uh, you're capable of ten times more than you think you are. And of course, we hear this a lot our heads are constantly holding us back. So the fact that you said, I'm just gonna go do whatever they do, it probably won't kill me. Yeah. You know, if I do life insurance, family's probably happy, <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, high five. So, um, but when you do it, you're actually waking up part of yourself in your head, just your brain. Yeah. Of course your body's on fire, but your head is really saying, wow, this is how much more I am right now. Absolutely. Not in six months, not yeah, if I took yeah. a class, this is how much more I was right now now yeah, I, is because I, I you love, i love the way you said it like right now yeah that, and that matters a lot people forget to live in the moment and then they plan six months from now or it's the hard to that... think in the future when you're there unless you're thinking can I, is there any way i can get the heck out of here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what i always say they're not worried about they're not worried about where the next paycheck's coming from yeah. anything i'm i'm right here right now exactly yeah exactly. it's it's i love how you said alive even the look on your face uh because you realize wow if this is only 10% of me, I've got to figure out how to get, I don't care about the 90, let's get the next 10. Yeah. You know, yeah. what's what's the next 10%? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and I remember I was running on the sand and there was no one watching me, right? And I was dead last pretty much uh, from all the other candidates that regularly train mm -hmm. with you. 
and there was about maybe another 100 feet to to the uh, pier post and i'm like in my head it, you know you talked about how your head fights against you yes right? yes so i'm like there's 100 feet and i'm like what's 100 feet nothing you know i'm i already ran four miles to get there or or quarter of a mile or maybe a little bit more to get to that pier um and i was in my head i was going like hey turn around right now who's gonna notice you know it's like who's gonna notice uh, can i trip and fall like i did when i was eight yeah yeah exactly <laughs> is there any way but, out of this <laughs> but then but then you look at it i'm like who are you tricking only yourself you know it's like no one cares whether you go to that post or not i always ask uh when i work with uh candidates every i was at uh, usc actually working with them uh, midshipmen about a week ago week or two ago and people talk i said give me some leadership traits and they said um okay and someone comes up with integrity and see here's a moment of uncertainty this is why i started to do all this is uh i said what's integrity well, all 100 of them went silent. You could feel it. One, it was the first in-person group I've done in a while because everybody's COVID terrified. <laughs> and so uh, I loved it. You could feel it go, which you can't feel on Zoom. And the whole room went silent. And I said, it's amazing how your brain's scrambling for what integrity means because we don't have integrity. Yeah. It's not a thing. Yeah, It's not a thing. And so when you said, you know, nobody's watching. And so finally someone said, what? They're like, oh, do the right thing when no one's watching. I said, look, you're there. <laughs> I said, yeah, someone's yeah, always exactly. watching. Yeah. It wasn't about anyone else. It was about your brain. And I lo- you're, this is why I love listening to you talk, because you um, you so clearly define, I was going to go to my limbic system, and then my prefrontal cortex said, no, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. We're not going there. Yeah. You can try to sit there, but we're not eight. Yeah. We're going to come back. Eight, we're gonna, yeah. As they say, I, I use the expression, when you're ready, come back to now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. And uh, it's it's amazing. Um, you know, the show is called Mobility and Inclusion, and you talked about I cu- love the, culture. I love the title. I was going to ask you about it, so please. Yeah. So uh, initially, when I came up with the uh, title of the of the podcast, I also have a book called Mobility mm-hmm. and Inclusion, and it all mostly geared towards people with disabilities, right? Uh, but before I go into the disability side of things, I want to ask you, you know, when we talk about inclusion, you know, Team Eagle One is all about diversity, right? And why why did you think that was the best? And, you know, not that you didn't think it before, but you said that diversity kind of made the program better. Mm. And why is that? I'm, I'm curious to know. Let me offer, let me take your words. A good program creates diversity. Um super important topic to me because we use the phrase diversity and inclusion. And I say, if I have to actually go after that phrase, what I'm pro- what I could potentially create is division and exclusion. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just working with a corporation several months ago and I sat in there, knew this great group of fantastic, well-intentioned folks mm-hmm. talking. And since I teach brain chemistry all the time, when people talk, I'm listening to how their head works and I love it. People are brilliant. You also get to hear when you really get some practice at it, and like you have, because I know you hear that way, is you you start to hear their limbic system firing in every word. It's like you'll hear the voice change and think, oh, we're just sliding into a higher level of fight, flight, mm-hmm. and freeze. So the thing that I would offer is when the Navy said, um, initially with our program, when it was a contract, a Navy contract, they had said this was all about diversity. I said, well, you're not going to create diversity by going after diversity. I said, create an amazing program yeah. with the right chemistry and, and leadership training and whatnot, and people come out of the woodwork. Yeah. And so... Um, it becomes enabling people more than anything else, right? Yes. You attract the right... I, I, ask, I ask executives this. Um, if you have to check the box and say, you know what, we don't have many brown-eyed people here. We have three blue-eyed people. We have one green-eyed person. We don't have many brown-eyed. And look at all the left-handers we have in the room. Should we hire some right-handers? And I always think that's the question I actually have is why? What's the difference? Meaning, meaning, what is it? Because I love different cultures. Mm-hmm. Whenever I go to another country or different areas of this country, I love the differences. If I go to Texas, it's different. West Virginia, it's different. If I go to Orange County, it's different, right? Yeah. Yeah. 35 miles yeah. south, we've gone <laughs> to a different state. And I love it. So with Eagle One, it, it, I find um, 
I'm stuttering a little bit because it's so simple in my head, but it's hard to put into words, that if you are actually developing people in the way their prefrontal cortex works, in mm -hmm. other words, what do you and I need to do to create a workplace that is so highly efficient and, um, and has great systems, supportive systems, but also highly efficient? So what I actually found is all I had to do is um, do what I thought promoted performance inside and out. And the next thing you know, I looked up and I was like, of course, yeah, as you know, everybody's wet and sandy. They all look alike. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so I always joke when they're all standing there because it'd be 35 of them. As you know, everybody's wet and sandy yeah, and covered yeah, in sand. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, look, every one of you looks alike. This yeah. is this is inclusion. This yeah. is diversity and inclusion right here. But mm -hmm. one of the amazing things, and I think people may not get it, is that they actually go after a target instead of saying, who am I as a person? Who am I as a person? Is this person going to attract people? Is my, is my awareness high enough? Is my learning high enough? Am I attractive? And then I could go after, hey, I'm in, in an area where there's only two types of people because I'm in the middle of Wyoming mm -hmm. somewhere. Or not. We're in the yeah. middle of LA. Yeah. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting 238 <laughs> dialects a day, right? Absolutely. That's the beautiful part of this city is you don't even realize how diverse it is until you leave. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're sitting somewhere thinking... Wow, this is so weird. There's only like, there's only like five different nationalities represented right here. How's that possible in any one place? You can't. Um, so what I have found there is, when you look at um, inclusion or diversity, I have to ask myself, um, what am I not doing? How is my brain not working? That somehow it's shutting a door mm -hmm. um, on people. Now there's geography, of course, but we don't have that issue so much here. Yeah, yeah. We can drive ten miles and, mm -hmm. and change to, oh, first generation, second, third, twenty third. You know, it yeah. doesn't matter. We have everything here. So um, when I work with companies, one of the things I always look at is who are your executives, because it doesn't matter what guideline if it's not who you are. Mm -hmm. If your prefrontal cortex isn't firing on your serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin levels. Uh, you will not attract and maintain people. I don't, it doesn't matter whether they have brown eyes, blue eyes, yeah, right-handed, yeah. left-handed. So I, I love this. Of course, my brother, when he was alive, was a quadriplegic and an amputee before that, and then a quadriplegic and an amputee. So when I first met you with in the mobility aspect, I thought, no, oh, you're speaking my language. But it's um, it's a process, and the process is you, as you know, because that's why we do this, right? Absolutely. The process is yeah. you. So all of a sudden, I turned around over years, and I thought what the Navy couldn't, target they couldn't create an opportunity by targeting something and i said no if you make the right program and then if it's not if you're it's not diverse according to the population you're in mm -hmm. i have to ask myself what is it i don't know yeah it's not or what am i not missing out on a great talent or yes know. and what is it that i don't know that's not opening those doors yeah is it that i need to be five miles away mm -hmm. because you know they could there could be anything so yeah, yeah. i'm uh I, I love it i our our program is probably um, one of the more diverse programs around, but I, it's not my, that's an intended consequence of amazing. I, I love it. Yeah. It's an intended it's, it's, consequence. It's not, it's not the design. It's just the consequence of. You don't get a work. great program yeah. and you don't get, and here's the biggest thing. As soon as you lower standards, people get it. Yeah. So the single greatest thing I find is that people thought, creating diversity and inclusion, you often see companies or systems or police departments say, oh, we'll just change the standards. And I think I've never met a culture or a group or a height or a brown-eyed person or a blue-eyed person group that isn't, doesn't have awesome in it. Yeah. So if you're not attracting awesome, it's not about, it's, not about it's about. actually your standards probably aren't high enough. Absolutely. Personally, yeah. right? Personally. So when I look at executives, one of the first things I look at is I'll sit in their meetings and I'll watch and I'll watch how the email responses are. And I'll watch to see people, whether the younger folks roll their eyes in there or something. And I think, see, they're telling me who their executives are. Yeah. You know, we're all, uh, we all sound great when we get called to the principal's <laughs> office, but they are telling me who they're really working for. So diversity inclusion is actually pretty simple. It's whether the hard part is whether I'm willing to be the person. Um, well, what's prejudice and bias? Limbic system. Yeah. When you're in fight, flight, or freeze, your prejudice and bias comes up. There's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I teach from it constantly. Mm -hmm. Your prejudice and bias minimizes as your prefrontal cortex activates. So if your company is stressing you out, if you're it's stressing everybody else out, 
it doesn't matter who you hire. Yeah. You're just going to be rolling through people. You're going to be bringing up your lawsuits. It's, it's crazy. And it's so simple, except that I have to do the work. Yeah. And I think that's the challenge there. They're saying, oh, we could just hire our way into checking the boxes. I think, no, you can't. You look good for a minute. You look uh, good for a minute. Yeah, exactly. And unfortunately, <laughs> and that's very well said, by the way. Yeah, you look good for a minute, yeah. you know, because the person that you're going to hire is going to realize very quick what you're about. And then he's going to last there. Yeah, it's um something, when I was in a meeting, I was uh, just assessing a meeting once about diversity and inclusion, because I love the topic. I love to work on it with groups. I, because it is really a self-development program mm -hmm. saying, look, there's a reason that you have to uh, target groups. And the reason is we don't have the right place for them to work at. Any group, any group, it doesn't matter. And then I'll, when I always start with, I, I went to a corporation not too long ago and I just went to the, some of the stores and I interviewed, I just talked to some of their people and said, hey, I just want to see what your day is like. And they said, we're scared. They said, we're scared. We don't get paid much money. The company keeps us at 10 hours a week so they don't have to pay benefits. So we have to work at four jobs to make 40 because yeah. it's pervasive. This was up in Washington state and it's pervasive there. So. And she said, we're scared because the police have come out and they said, they straight up say, we don't respond to mm -hmm. what they call smash and grabs, yeah, shoplifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, we're scared. And when I went to the CEO, I said, you know, your folks are scared. I think you're on the verge. If there's one thing, another one of my strengths is I can see when bad is coming, what I call the look before the look before the look. <laughs> so we can see when bad is coming. Yeah. And she said, you're just making that up. We exit interview. And this is the, this is where this is why there's, I think, this is one of the examples of why there's such a problem in corporate America yeah. in creating a lasting culture. It's always this roller coaster. We mm -hmm. check the boxes, but then people saw through that and we check the boxes yeah, and they yeah. saw through that. Is, um, and I said, she goes, well, are you saying that? Or are you just making that up because you, and I said, no, I'm quoting. And she said, I've never heard that before. And we exit interview. And I said, I'm sorry, <laughs> you're interviewing people who quit? and expecting them to really care and actually share with you, that ship has sailed. Next, we went out to the manager's meeting. First two managers stood up and said, we can't get people to show up for work because they're so scared. And I thought, see, these managers have been delivering that message to that CEO for years. Yeah. But she's so used to not listening to them that, uh, that it was there. That's not her fault. That's the fact that her limbic system is firing constantly. So her clarity is down. But it's it, like, go, it goes back to developing yourself, right? It goes, always, always. It's not some woo-woo thing. <laughs> like it's not some fluff saying, let's let's drink some tea, hug a tree and meditate, yeah, right? Yeah. It's literally chemistry. It's mm -hmm. neuroscience. Yeah. If you are stressed out all day, your bias and prejudice is increasing. That is not a racial thing. That is not a mobility thing. That is simply saying, I have to get small and save myself first. Yeah. The breath, I can't even hear you because my breath is, yeah. my heart rate is saying, save yourself, yeah, save yourself. That, so that was a great lesson for me. And it's all connected, as you know, because you talk about this all the time. Look, mobility and inclusion, amazing combination of words. Because a lot of times you, you see how they come together, but you wouldn't naturally come across that. I actually didn't like it. Uh, well, initially when I came up, and I didn't come up with the title, I kind of, because it was going to be more disability related, I had some dis people with disabilities mm -hmm. as my uh, mentors, advisors, if you will, right? Because I was just stepping into this community and I don't want to be perceived as someone dictating how things should be, right? I get it, yeah. So uh, when, they, when they said mobility and inclusion, I was like, that's great. Mm -hmm. But then I saw all these people talking about inclusion, but they, were, they didn't know what inclusion yeah. really meant. You know, Ch checking the box. Exactly. And nothing like, ch nothing can ruin a great term, a great word like checking, like yeah. using it to check the box. Yeah. Oh, we, I watched the corporation I used to work with that I left at because I just said, look, we're, there's too many steps just to get to ground zero here, just to get to the baseline. And they said, we're only going to hire women, females this next year. And I thought, good, but eventually they have to actually work with you. Eventually, sure, there's so much talent out there, but like you said, it's personal development, yeah. and it was a train wreck on the corporate level. Yeah, so it's just yeah. like, what? You just can't do it. And uh, and they get great news articles out of it, but um, but I love it. It's it's all self development, and the, your culture is who you are. What is it? It's a it's a belief system and a knowledge. It's demonstrated beliefs mm -hmm. based on yeah. the knowledge of yeah, your yeah. thing is culture. So 
Um, it's just amazing. We're making it hard. It's effort. It's simple, but it takes great effort. But exactly. we're making it hard as but if... we like to be in the comfort zone. Yes, yes. <laughs> and saying, okay, we have six brown-eyed people, six blue-eyed yeah. people. Let's call that inclusion. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Those are human beings. Yeah. That was not a subset. Those are human beings. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. You also help people, uh, you know, transition from mm -hmm. good, uh, I mean, maybe they went from a good situation to a worse situation or a bad situation or, you know, with wounded vet veterans and stuff like that, uh, suicide prevention that you talk, uh, I saw you talk about it. Uh, yeah. We, I have a, over the last 15 years or so, I've developed a series that I call the Leadership Biomechanics. One of the first things I noticed in the SEAL team is, Who's getting injured and who isn't and why? I'm just super curious, mm -hmm. right? I'm actually curious to the point I think it annoys people. Is I always want to know, why did that happen here and not happen there? Yeah. And then, you know, um, uh, so when I started looking at that and I started looking at, you know, our brain wants to, uh, a lot of people don't grow up thinking about suicide, but now they do because we tell them the word all the time. So a lot of times I'll switch it to self-harm because their brain has to be more creative. Suicide says one thing. Mm -hmm. So if I say self-harm, they at least have to think about things. And it's so ambiguous that they may not. So I always say, if you want to increase suicide, keep saying that word. Because yeah. here's what your limbic system does. Your limbic system says, oh, that sounds this really bad thing. And it files it away on the really bad day filing cabinet. So now when you think, gosh, I'm miserable. Oh, oh, this is why... There's a question in the at the VA when you go, you know, have you thought about suicide? Well, I talk we talk about self harm and everything. I've thought about it a hundred thousand times. I just haven't I haven't <laughs> considered it for me. Yeah. But now I can turn around and say, Oh, this is the feeling that if somebody was pervasive and someone didn't know how their prefrontal cortex worked. Mm -hmm. So mentioning a negative word actually exacerbates that. If I tell you, Simon Sinek says it, we can't think in the negative. If I tell you don't think about green monkeys. Everyone now is thinking about green monkeys. So every time I tell you this horrible thing, this is how we continue racial terms. This is how we continue derogatory terms in general. Every time I tell you not to say this, you file it away. And in fight, flight, or freeze, that's the box that yeah. gets open. You access it, The yeah. box that fits what we shouldn't say to each other yeah. is what <laughs> opens. The behavior. So if we wanted to minimize self-harm, we would actually train for the opposite. We are reinforcing the limbic system mm -hmm. to keep coming up with terms and saying, we're going to do 20 push-ups for X prevention. That word is now on every four-year-old's mind. It is on every five-year-old's mind. It is on every seven-year-old's mind. Mm -hmm. They did not naturally think of that term at five and six and seven. Maybe a small number did. But if we... So, um, so I work with a lot of veterans and, and whatnot when we talk about our leadership biomechanics. And guess what? I just taught a class at James Madison University for leadership biomechanics for future counselors. Mm -hmm. It's the same class, slightly different vernacular because we're talking to vets, we're speaking the vets language. Your brain is your brain. Yeah. Your negative is your negative and your positive is your positive. So I often say, as we said in the beginning, if people are stressed out, good. Your brain is functioning like a highly tuned eight cylinder motor. It's just running on negative fuel yeah. and we can train it. So. The veterans, the post-traumatic stress, um, our memories aren't going away. I don't want them to go away. <laughs> this, whatever negative happened in your life, that's why we're sitting here. I don't want them to go away. What I want to do is make sure that the negative gym is not where you've done the most of your training. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I use the expression, you have your negative gym and your positive gym, limbic system and your prefrontal cortex. And I think... This is one of the issues we have in the SEAL team right now. We are not training leaders in the SEAL teams. We are, we are giving them a management course and calling it leadership. So we are training them at the negative gym. They mm -hmm. are fantastic, high-toned operators in the field. Then we say, go mentor some kids at BUDS. With what skill yeah. set? Yeah. With what skill set? So they take their highly toned limbic system and they bring it to bud and it's can they create Lord of the Flies? But that's actually the entire corporate America like that that way. Everywhere, yeah. everywhere, and it's so simple, but it takes effort. Yeah. yeah, we're so used to clicking the box. I love teaching from um, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, mm -hmm. and um, 
one of the reasons is he really spells it out. And I just did a class on it last week to say morality and ethics and prejudice and bias are way up top in their pyramid, even though I don't think he built it as a pyramid initially. Way up top in the pyramid. I said, how do you create these? I said, it's down here. It's the security issues and the physical behaviors. I have to do something. I have to figure out what stresses me out and then learn about it and learn what to do so it doesn't. Guess what? Higher demonstrations of integrity, morality, ethics, lower prejudice, bias. That's the intended benefit. Yeah. I didn't have to create integrity because no one has integrity, right? When I was at USC, I said, look, what do you just go to Target and you buy some integrity? What is integrity? Every time you follow through with what you committed to yourself to do, or even if you committed to me, you committed to yourself first. Exactly, yeah. Every time you follow through, your prefrontal cortex says, oh, I'm a little more confident and I understand the power of following through. It's all integrity is. Yeah. So when people look at leaderships have integrity, in the last week, I can think of things I didn't follow through with, which means I have no integrity. But I have demonstrated it many times this week. <laughs> but I have no integrity because there are things I don't follow through on. Yeah, You know, I've, uh, I've let my meter run out a couple times in the last month. Low integrity. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, hey, man, if everybody's going to run their meter out, and they're probably, <laughs> yeah. we're okay with that. So, but I love what you're saying because it's so... Um, it's not even hard. It just takes courage. Yeah. It takes courage to train your prefrontal cortex because our brain likes certainty. And knowing is the most ludicrous term. What, since you were a kid, what do we still talk about that's still true and hasn't changed? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. nothing. We're like, we're not even out of the trees. We t we're not even out of the trees. We're still up in the trees. And nothing. We, when we were texting yesterday and, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, I was talking about your accomplishment and you told me, I feel like I haven't accomplished anything. Oh and I'm like, Dude, this, this guy is like thinking the same way I am because sometimes I feel like, okay, these, this person is hiring me because of certain criteria. And I'm like, do I really know these things? You know, it's like, it's, it surprises me sometimes, yeah. you know? And there's your confidence, right? Is yeah. you say, I'm just going to keep going because what is, uh, because there's of a, and just watch for mutual benefit. Because then we don't know it, but it's working. Yeah. If there's mutual benefit, we'll go, there's working. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Um, and I love that. Somebody asked me that the other day. They said, oh, you military guys always seem so confident. I said, because it's not about right and wrong. It's about moving forward mm -hmm. the best you can and adjusting on the way yeah. in this right here, yeah. right now. So it might look like we think we're right, but what we are is thinking we'll adapt. And that's, like you said, with corporate America, or mm -hmm. we talk about... Um, I wrote a blog post about mobility and inclusion, actually, about what my brother used to call the first step. Oh, really? If there's a step outside a restaurant, mm -hmm. it's a sign. It's a sign of the culture in the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. If I have to boost his wheelchair up for that first step, it's only going to go south from there. <laughs> and so he told me once, he said, I said, we can boost you up there. And he said, I'm sure you can. But that's a sign of the culture. Yeah. That's why the little things matter. When I look at an executive structure and I watch the way they start and finish a meeting, if it's not on time, if they don't honor mm -hmm. that, I already know what I'm going to find inside. That's yeah. that's brain chemistry. They are telling me the chemistry of themselves. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that is the culture. And so they can check all the boxes they want, but it's not going to happen. So yeah. I love working with veterans and folks in transition. And now the civilian world, tons of post-traumatic stress. All that is is something so negative that I'm using it as a warning system mm -hmm. that I just, that is overwhelming in today's world. None of us walk away. That's why administrators, people with Facebook, people yeah. with TikTok, one of the candidates said to me, I've, I can't believe I live in a world where people can tell me I'm horrible and it actually has to translate from another language because they're on social media. He said, someone 3 billion people away can tell me how much I suck. Yeah. yeah. And I think that is limbic system training. And we are behind. Okay. We are behind. We can check all the boxes we want, but we are behind. in Because we are inundated with flight, fight, flight, or freeze training. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, uh, it's amazing. You said many things that I want to touch on, mm -hmm. uh, like the, morali the morality and the ethics things. Like, you know, uh, people applying for a job. Or they're, recently I read that they're going to discharge, or they have discharged already, 3,000 people from the armed forces, between the armed forces and the first responders in terms of uh, firefighters and mm -hmm. nurses and stuff like that, just because they're not, you know, complying with the vaccine mm -hmm. mandates, right? So, Super challenge. Talk about some left board, what we call left board 
left board is your limbic system, yeah, the right yeah, board is yeah. your prefrontal cortex. Yeah. Very challenging subjects. Yeah. yeah, and it's the same thing is happening in the workforce, you know, with yeah. people not uh, wanting to get vaccinated. They're, you know, they're being asked to leave. And for me, you know, well, who's right, who's wrong? It's not about right or wrong. Let's <laughs> say I'm convinced that this is not a good thing for me, you know? I shouldn't, in my opinion, I should not be put in a situation where I'm choosing between mm -hmm. feeding my family and, you know, hurting, potentially yeah. hurting my health. Yeah. You said a lot there too, and we brought up the words right and wrong. And um, I have lived through a lot of presidents. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm 56 next week. So I've lived through a lot of presidents. And um, I can't believe it. My mom's happy that I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked. My mom's thrilled. Um, one of the things that I find is um, some parents came up to me during multiple presidents. It doesn't matter what color tie they were wearing, right? Because now we've now we're talking about long enough where there's been a red tie and a blue tie yeah, in yeah. Er, in everybody's recent memory. Absolutely. We've had a red tie, blue tie, Absolutely. and a couple of each. So parents come up to me on any president, and they'll say, "How can you train these young folks?" with this administration, and it doesn't matter, fill in the blank, 4, 8, 10, 12, uh, 4, 8, 12, you know, 16, doesn't matter mm -hmm. which administration. I always say left, right, or center, I have the same job. Yeah. Whatever cut to color ties in the White House, I have the same job. So to speak to your point about right or wrong, your limbic system, when you think in terms of right or wrong, your prejudice and bias comes up, mm -hmm. your IQ comes down, your health, your white blood cell count changes, we actually get physically weaker, it is the beginning of dis-ease, if yeah, we think about yeah, the origin yeah. of that word. So one of the things I like to offer to folks is, as soon as you think in terms of right and wrong, uh, it doesn't matter, they're both limbic system responses. They're both saying, I was uncertain, so mm -hmm. I decided. I agree, I disagree, yeah. you're good, you're yeah. bad, I'm good, I'm bad, it's good, it's bad, and right or wrong. So as soon as we get there, because there's nothing we can do about uncertainty and change, um, and, can create anxiety for me too. And it does that death and the SEAL team all week. I've been having to keep really sticking to my baseline to stay off of being, there's a less civilized me that mm -hmm. is, that mm -hmm. is my overseas self. There's a less civilized me. Right. <laughs> so I really, uh, it's a very, very strong default setting of mine. And, yeah. uh, it just has no place in this, in this particular world. So, um, uh, when we think about terms of right or wrong, the thing I always offer to people is there's no end to that loop because now you're in a control, fear, anger, depression loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to turn around and say, um, we have to try to think differently because right, wrong, good, bad, I agree, I disagree, are all trying to create certainty. And there's that knowing thing again, <laughs> where I can't be knowing. So what I would offer people is, I don't have an answer for your frustration, but I can tell you what's happening to you when we're busy agreeing, disagreeing, right, wrong, you know, uh, I worked in Berkeley for a couple of years with the Sikh community, really fantastic. I learned so much because amazing for me, because uh, there's many, many first and second generation folks and families who got there, uh, who came here to this country. And I love that I could be fully immersed because they have such a history, such a rich history. And I got to really see how brain chemistry works mm -hmm. um, to help minimize the six and seven generations it takes for new families uh, and communities coming to this country to assimilate in the professional world. They might be getting straight A's, all these things. But the thing I would offer is whenever anybody's frustrated, I, I got a little, oh, when I was up there, people are very politically, it was hot, it was hot up there. <laughs> and because I have a US flag outside, my neighbors would stop by and they would start right in on politics. And I always said the same thing. They'd say, did you hear what so-and-so said? And I would say, no tell me. Well, by the second or third time, they wouldn't come in with their limbic system lit up anymore yeah, yeah. because I wasn't going to help them agree or disagree exactly. or good or bad exactly. or right or wrong. Yeah. And I got to learn about them. So I suggest to people to really practice it. When you find yourself really frustrated, um, you've got to get your faculties back. You've got to get your SEAL team self back that says, I have a mission and my mission is not to be right or wrong. It's actually to create create mutual benefit, right. create mutual benefit. So, um, but when I was up there, I got really good at not offering an opinion because what I found is that when we have to be right or wrong, 
we are still going into fight, flight, or freeze, even when we agree with each other. Now we just fuel each other's <laughs> negativity. You exactly. know, so I, I have found today um, that I was just on the phone, and I'm constantly reminded of it. So our opinions very seldom matter. They very seldom change the game. And they certainly don't create much mutual benefit. You might go, you're right, and then the conversation's over. Yeah, yeah. But if I actually said, that's so interesting, the way you phrase that. Now I'm encouraging the conversation. You notice how we both smile? That's our yeah. prefrontal cortex going, okay, I'm back in the game. Yeah. We're not agreeing or disagreeing. It's what I love about talking to you too, is I know I think you think this way, where you're just interested. Of course we have opinions, yeah. but I'm more interested in this mutual benefit. So um, this is, I've never seen a time where people have more training opportunity for their prefrontal cortex Agreed. than now. Agreed. I've never seen a time. We have, I grew up in a world where it appeared that if a journalist was going to not tell you the truth, they were lied to. I grew up in a world where I'd watch people get fired for trying to tell the truth when they were told not to. That is not the world that we live in. And also the truth is a varying thing. Confirmation bias. We can find a, we can, if, if you have a vaccination opinion, we can find a doctor who will support it. Yeah. If I have an opposing one, I'll find a doctor yeah, who support exactly. it. We'll exactly. find six more. So there's never been a time where it is really up to us to say, how do I activate my prefrontal cortex, serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, and how do I make myself interested in you? One of the things, you uh, tricks I often use is find somebody's brilliance because whether I agree with you isn't important to me. I'm actually looking for your brilliance and I'll think, wow, look how passionate you are about that. That's part of your brilliance. You know, um, it's changed my life. Yeah. Uh, there's an expression about something I came up with about a year and a half ago in class. Everyone is right. If you can approach a conversation and catch yourself in, I agree or I disagree, you're right, you're wrong, I'm right, I'm wrong, and turn into, everyone is right. Let me think about how you're right. It changed my life within like two months. Mm -hmm. I would listen to people talk and think, okay, they're describing both sides of an argument. Let me just focus on one and think about how they're 100% correct. Yeah, yeah. And then I would think, oh, I just understood them so much better. And then I could say, okay, now let's see how they're correct. And I thought, now I understand them both. It helped me navigate. And all of a sudden, what happened? inclusivity yeah. happened because they, I said, I actually think there's a meeting of the minds here on these two points. And they'll say, well, that is what I want, even though it didn't sound like yeah, it. Yeah. So that diversity and inclusion is an intended consequence of everyone is right. If I understand how you're 100% correct, and I don't mean in your opinion, I mean, how would I buy 100% into what you're saying? And then we can evolve from there. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're absolutely. wrong and I'm right, we're done. We're done. Yeah, it's yeah. done. Yeah, it's so easy to say you're wrong and I'm right. Because your limbic system wants to close the loop and say, now I'm certain, now I know. Yeah. And yeah. we talked about this. Yeah. There's no such thing as knowing. <laughs> yeah, and That's there's a, no progress, right? Yeah, so we're not going evolution. Yeah, evolution. Exactly. In training, and you may have heard it, we use the expression, improve your position. Improve, yep. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. We're here, our lives are working. Yeah. But we're certainly not thinking... We just like to flatline this yeah. right here. I know you well enough to know <laughs> we're not saying this is the end of my flatline. Yeah. I want to move to 2,700 young folks and families last year. I want to move to 10,000 and 10 million because I'm using social media. Mm -hmm. I avoided cameras like the plague, but then I realized I can't help people unless I sit here. Yeah, You know, I, I, I have to get out of the trench on occasion, but I, I'm not an actor. I don't need to be king. I want everyone to be king of their own little space. Exactly. And that's exactly. my job. And that's, uh, that's, I mean, th uh, that should matter and will matter to everyone, yeah. right? If you're the king of your own space, you're fulfilled pretty much, so unless true. you limit yourself. My, I uh, was thinking about it today because someone talked about their legacy. In a perfect world, my legacy would be that you don't remember me, that there's a million people who are doing great things because people like you and I touched upon their lives and said, let's try everything is right. Yeah. Exactly. Let's try find something you like about everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try every time you think, oh, they're wrong and I'm right or I'm right and they're wrong. Maybe I just said the same thing saying, <laughs> that's so interesting how you phrase that. Yeah. Because um, I'm just a knucklehead who was curious and was sick of seeing people in pain yeah. and sick of seeing people frustrated and irritated and post-traumatic stress and moving towards self-harm. And I thought, 
we're too smart for this. Mm -hmm. And now we demonstrate it every, every year with veterans and corporate folks. And I work with a lot of first responders because they don't understand what that day-to-day -day job is doing to them in their limbic system. Yeah. Someone told me the other day, they said, I'm 36 years in EMS and I can't take it anymore. I'm actually scared, scared of self-harm. Yeah, yeah. And he said, sitting in your class was the first time that I actually saw a light. When your limbic system is firing so often, you can't see your prefrontal cortex from there. You have to know it's there and know how to reaccess it, but you can't see it. You can't feel that positivity will ever exist again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't know a single person who hasn't been there. They might not have been there long enough for it to destroy them. Yeah. But if someone's screaming and yelling at someone, they're certainly not saying, oh, remember that great day at the beach? <laughs> Those two chemistries don't coexist. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, you know, I want to uh, wrap it up with what uh, I heard you say during the training. Mm -hmm. This was the first training I took. It wasn't profanity, was it? No, <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it was about improving your position. Ah, yeah. Right? yeah. It's, and and that, that, to me, kind of like, really kept me going with the guys right so uh and and i do believe in that mm -hmm. i don't believe in competition mm -hmm. even though sometimes you find yourself competing because sure, it's fun yeah it's fun yeah yeah, yeah. there's a there's a good natured nature Absolutely. there's a motivation to exactly it. Yeah. but but when you innovate and when you always improve upon your current position you're already gonna win right? and we're all so unique yeah exactly everybody's so brilliant in their combination of things that for you to compare yourself to another person would be like stealing from yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, I always say, if you were to look at comparing yourself all the time and say, well, they're still better than me, what we're losing is your combination of you. You're not tapping into your brilliance yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, your own sense of brilliance. Yeah. And because I'm comparing myself to someone else, well, that's my fight, flight, or freeze response. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. so of course we can all get jealous or insecure, yeah, right? That's... We actually need that. Because that's a, that a driver. But you just said something about improving your position that I love. No science has ever found how much your prefrontal cortex is capable of. I know what your limbic system's mm -hmm. capable of because you'll, you'll literally drop out of the system. You'll become so depressed, you'll get fired. You'll become so angry, you'll get fired. You won't have relationships. Ultimately, you can do self-harm until you eliminate yourself. The, as I phrase it, the purpose of the limbic system, stop input seek relief, eliminate the relationship. No one knows what the combination, what the top end of your prefrontal cortex is. Yeah. You can always improve your position when you're focused on positivity. It will never have anything to do with anyone else except that together we improve more. Yeah, absolutely. You know, mutual benefit. Absolutely. Mutual and benefit. Yeah. You're so great to talk to. I really love it. Um, it's um, so many terms that float around. This is just chemistry. Just chemistry. Now, if you're, and, and that's just for the body. We yeah. can call it quantum physics if you're a scientist. We can call it spirituality and yeah. God if you're yeah. religious. Yeah. It's all works because they're all connected. I'm just working from here because this is what I've been given yeah. Yeah. by Makes both sense. quantum Makes physics sense. Yeah. And, and spirituality. Absolutely. This is what I've been given. So Absolutely. This is so, the way I explain it. You know, perfectly said. Uh, let's just remind people one more time uh, how they can donate to Team Eagle One. And well, Direct. thank you. Uh, Team Eagle One, uh, you would make our day. I can't even tell you that. Our website is directaction.us. Uh, my name is John McLaren. People call me Coach Mac. Uh, we are a 501c3, fantastic organization, and we need your help. Um, our instructors volunteer almost all of their time. I have put $1.2 million of billable hours into this program in the last 10 years and almost 500,000 of personal income. I'm a regular working guy, so it is not easy. So uh, supporting these folks, you literally are helping create the next 50 years of somebody's life. It's This is trajectory changing, and we are working on everything I've ever touched on, understanding consent, sexual assault, uh, the brain chemistry we're working on is making people better parents, mm -hmm. um, uh, higher levels of confidence, achievement. Again, we run an intended consequence as we have the most diverse program I've ever seen because that's what happens when you train people for their personal brilliance. People just show up yeah. and everybody fits in. So um, if you want to support us, you would make the day and the next 50 years of a whole lot of people. And I do not like asking people for help, but I need yours.
So thank absolutely you. no, and uh, you know I couldn't have said it any better than what what you just said. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach Mac, you are truly shaping the next generation <laughs> of this this country or whichever country they go out and serve. We have well, also we're in about six countries now because of Zoom. Who knew? Exactly. I wish I spoke more languages, and I'm working on instructors to do that. Fortunately, so many people speak English. Six different countries show up for our stuff. I'm just 90 year olds and 10 year olds yeah. on our online because our online programs are for civilians as well. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea. I, I saw the value in my small area, but now there's a need and, and think people like you and think moments like this is making the reach exponential. We will reach 10,000 people in person and millions this year. Uh, because we're bringing up our YouTube channel mm -hmm. where we can have five and 10 minute snippets. We have one, one of our core values is that everyone wins. Yeah. This is your prefrontal cortex. I meet people all the time and they'll say, well, uh, someone has to lose. And I think, no, that's your limbic system talking. Your prefrontal cortex says every day you come to Eagle One or come to class, you should walk away with a tool that is easy to implement and that works. Yeah. So, you, yeah. yeah, it's not one of those wait six months. It's not an if. Yeah. It's yeah. not an if it happens or when. Every single day, everyone wins. As you did, you said, I was so alive. Yeah. Look at your face light up about how much oh, you man. remembered. I just listened and acted and performed what you see how that team is. Yeah. Did you feel like you're an outsider? No. After the all. first two minutes, and of not course, we're all outsiders <laughs> walking into a cold yeah. room. Yeah. I was, you know, I, when I walked in and I was thinking, and I, I wasn't thinking what I was getting into, mm -hmm. but when the email said Navy SEAL training and I didn't even see what other options were, you know, I was, I was like, like whoop, whoop, whoop. that's where I'm going, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's, it's amazing. People have so much, some of the parents have called and said, what are you doing? And I said, this is the program I wish ever, I always wanted to create and now I have it and I just need to expand it. But this is how your brain works. Everybody's killing themselves. Everybody gets that there's something amazing in them. But what happens is we keep talking about things like integrity and prejudice and bias. Your brain doesn't understand those words. Mm -hmm. So if we break it down and the way, and it doesn't matter how old you are, a 10 year old, a 15 year old learns the same way as a 50 year old and a 70 year old, yeah. it has to be broken down in a way that's digestible. Absolutely. There's never been a need. And these kids and their families are yeah. like, God, I just, it sounds ridiculous when you actually talk about how fast and rapid the change is and it's permanent. You're going to have to torture them yeah. to bring them back to that left board. Your prefrontal cortex is dying to come out it's Absolutely. just not natural Absolutely. needs help so Absolutely. thank you so much i really no, appreciate uh, it thank you for your time yeah. i really I'm appreciate i'm sorry it. i ramble a lot but, I, you know, uh, no this was exciting great, great information it's an exciting mission yeah. uh, this is the this is the good fight if i wanted to go after post-traumatic stress sexual assault p better parenting uh lower child abuse this was the way to do it is catching people on the way in and then they call me when there's emergencies i still handle emergencies so yeah, yeah. um because our legal system is not designed to handle that Absolutely. It's not designed to work out a strategy to minimize that chaos in your life and let you get back to living. And that's what we're doing, right? One last question. Yeah. You talked about the legal system not, not designed to do it that way. Do you think there's a way we can impact the change or drive a change into the our, our, our traditional legal system to maybe in one way or another improve and it's dealing. yes it's a great question because you're also talking about when you ask that question about can we improve that is there a way you're also asking hey can we can we minimize post traumatic stress can we minimize alcoholism can we create better parenting strategies mm -hmm. they're all connected right one of the things we realize in life is that if i wanted to affect everything i'd affect one thing positively yeah, yeah. if i wanted to adversely affect everything i would adversely affect one thing um there absolutely is a way i think one of the efficiency issues is that if I go directly at a problem and I say, you are a problem, right? One of the things I talk about is a feedback loop. First, we reinforce guidelines. So when we look at a program like Eagle One or leadership biomechanics or working with first responders or cops or um, in cultures like that, a lot of times they'll say, I'll give you an example. In not in the legal system, but in sex trafficking. I worked with some first responders and some district attorneys up there with the sex trafficking unit. And they said, I want to understand why these folks don't leave. They have opportunity. We give them a place. 
And I said, you know, it's not that they won't leave. They can't. Your, your brain has to have the chemistry yeah. to be able to make that good choice and bring that down. So there's a process. We tend to go after a problem saying, this is a problem, let's attack the problem. There's a process, there's groundwork and foundational work that would have to be laid. In the same way, if we can't check the box at a corporation, it's all the same. Yeah, It's yeah, all the same. Yeah. So I think you're doing it. If you started to take, if you started to actually do leadership biomechanics or the work you're doing or all these things with a law school, you would create the change. Mm -hmm. Because what you would create is a person who wasn't just responding in the either isolated no man's land of law, the administrative yeah, yeah, yeah. area, or fight, flight, or freeze, or whatever. Um, that is very hard for the human brain, because when we're afraid, we want to focus on, you're the issue, I eliminate you. <laughs> you're not the issue. When does the blame stop? Is it your mom's fault? Yeah. Is it your mom's mom's fault? Is it your mom's mom's dad's fault? Yeah, yeah. Is it the society they it grew in or the country they right came now. from? Or someone says, oh, in the 80s, in Lebanon, this happened. And yeah. I think, when will you stop yeah. looking for the cause? Yeah. Yeah. Let's pave the way of improving the position. So I absolutely think when I worked with USC about a week ago, some of the students came up and they said, we've been here for two years and we learned more about how we work and how we'll become a positive leader navigating better mm -hmm. outcome strategies, because that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, in this last 90 minutes than we have in two years, it's out there, but at an institutional level, it's way, way behind. Yeah. So um, if someone needs to call me, I'll donate a couple hours, or you can do, you can make a donation to the nonprofit. It's out there, and when you when you understand the simplicity it's incredibly complex. When you understand the simplicity of approach to your brain chemistry, you're a rock star. Yeah. So I want, I do, I want, that's why I try to work with such diverse groups, first responders, uh, ROTC folks, the future counselors, mm -hmm. because they're going to bring this chemist, this brain chemistry and leadership biomechanics awareness to their, to their clients, to their Absolutely. patients. And they're going to have a huge impact. So what happens is it's not that we, can, they won't, they can't. So you can't go right at the core of a problem and say, you stop drinking. You have to say drinking was a reaction, not an action. It's an action, but it's an action in reaction mm -hmm. to your brain chemistry. I have to step back and say, how can I keep working with you to create the chemistry where the desire and the need minimizes? Because yeah. as you said, just with heavy breathing, you can't hear me when you're in fight, flight, or freeze. The call of the breath, the call of the alcohol, the call of the system and who's right and who's wrong is too big. So absolutely, it's a bigger conversation, but you're in, we're not in control, but we're in charge of the direction yeah. and we keep demonstrating it. Even, you know, the, the look at the graduation rate in our program, in the programs and the fact that those young folks are so welcoming to you when let's face it, it takes courage to walk up to that group. They're a bunch of hard yeah. chargers. It yeah. takes courage, by the <laughs> way. I always does, tell yeah. people it took courage to walk up to this group. You yeah. know, there's your confidence building. So yes, that's a long winded answer. I know as all of mine are, but there's not only a way, it's a simple way, mm -hmm. but we're in fight, flight, or freeze as a hardwired response, hundreds to thousands of times a day. And it is dictating. Your limbic system is a dictator. It is dictating our response and it is minimizing your abilities. This conversation, right? I could feel my head going crazy on positivity, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. Super long-winded, I know, but there's so much of a way. No, it's, but right, it's right there. Again, like as, as you're talking, I'm thinking about other things that I can ask you. Right, because right? it's all right there. It's yeah, all... but uh, we're going to be... Shutting off for today. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, we have this slow warm up, and all of a sudden it's like, and this and this, yeah. and then we're breathing underwater and we're walking on Mars. All this great uh, stuff. No, right. but again, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, I want to do this again. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can uh, select one topic and we can dissect that next time. <laughs> so that would actually be great. That would yeah. actually be great. I'd love uh, it. And, and for any of your any of your viewers or listeners. It doesn't cost anything to call and have these conversations. Yeah. Like it's right there in your corporations, in your families, in your stress level, all these things. There's a path yeah. and it's a pure science path. It's not, you don't have to, we don't have to levitate ashtrays and coasters. There's a pure science yeah. path on <laughs> the way out of this. So Absolutely. thank you so much. Thank you Anytime. so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, John, for your time. Yeah. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye.